All right, so up to this point, we've been um, working on now the, um, the database aspect of our project. Using PouchDB, we are able to save data to the database. Uh, we're going to wrap up that concept saving. Then we need to retrieve data from the database to display it on screen. Then so once we've got data, we need to then learn how to edit the data. Uh, I might have misspelled something, or I want to add something. Maybe I saved a comic, but I didn't add notes, so I want to add notes later. So we want to then edit the data. And then let's say uh, we no longer have that comic, uh, that item in the inventory. We want to remove data from the database. So those are all the big main uh, operations of a database. Save data, retrieve data, edit data, delete data. Uh, we're, we're wrapping up the portion of saving data, and then we'll do the others. So I've got my project running, and I'm going to save a comic. I haven't saved anything yet. So again, in the beginning, you don't have to save anything meaningful. Eventually, you want to save real content, but I'm saving the comic A. I'm going to save another one, BB. I'm just saving, I'm just saving data to the database. So it should continue to work from last time. We got our pop-up that says comic save. The fields clear themselves out. And then to confirm completely, uh, besides the feedback in the console, uh, all of this looks the same as before, that it's detecting what I'm saving and such. F to fully com confirm that this is working, remember you go over to the application uh, viewer in Chrome. And then you look at index DB, and your database should be there based on the person that's logged in. V at v.com is logged in, therefore I've got a pouch database, v at v. And by sequence, I can view the data saved. And so far, I've saved two things to the database. And so it shows me there that I, on my first item that I've saved, it shows it to me here. It, it kind of gets cut off on my screen, but you see there that it's in JSON format um, exactly as, as we capture it in that it was title, year, publisher, notes, etc. But then here it kind of shows it alphabetically. The actual fields of that document, notes, publisher, title, year, and ID. So I've saved two things to the database so far. As we beta test this, because obviously I, I can guide you in a particular solution of, what, of how to accomplish this, but perhaps you also beta test it and, and come up with, well, what about this? What about that? And, and I welcome that. If you kind of work on the project and you, fi and you figure out something that maybe I didn't note, uh, bring it to my attention, maybe it is something big to worry about and we'll try to... Uh, to see if we have an answer for it. One of the things, for example, is if I have a comic called An Amazing Journey number 99, whatever. Remember, the ID of the comic is based on the title, plus a few other things. So when I'm looking at a, at a comic with a simple title, OK, the unique ID of this comic is BB1992. But then when I've got a comic, that has spaces in all of that. Sometimes spaces cause problems in, in storage and such. Sometimes a system may read a space as like an end of the data. So what we can do is we can further massage the data so that when we save it, we omit some of these things. Spaces, special characters, and such. So let's, let's polish that little bit there, and then we can get to retrieving the data. So I want to eliminate some of these special characters, like spaces. I only want words or numbers. We'll come back to our uh, index.js file. And we'll find the spot in our code where we created the, the JSON bundle of data. Remember, we had a function that captured what was the first word of the comic, and then another function that processed is it the, is it of, etc. And then we had a function that actually stored it to the database. Can you tell me at approximately what line was, were all of those separate bits of data combined into one JSON object? Anyone find that in their code? It's at approximately 
line 318. Your lines may differ. But this is where all of the separate all of the separate uh, pieces of data are bundled together into <coughs> one object. And then later on, we put that into the database. So in my case, line 319 is where I define the underscore ID, which is based on temp3 plus the year of the comic plus the number of the comic. Backing up, temp ID 3, if I back up a little bit, temp ID 3 comes from the switch statement that determined did it have a word the, a, l, or none of those. So it's either going to be Amazing Spider-Man instead of The Amazing Spider-Man, or Gato instead of El Gato. Or if it has nothing like that, like Hulk, temp ID 3 will just be Hulk. Well, what we can do with this, here's where we can strip away, here's where we can strip away the, um, the extra characters. So let's change something right here. We're going to, uh, this object, we will use a method on it, a command, to strip away, to replace characters that we don't want. So we'll do, do dot replace here. Let's say note use dot replace method to select certain characters in the string name of the comic and replace them with something else nothing we want to replace any instance of spaces, or dashes, or quotation marks, or asterisks, which may cause problems later on. We want to replace those things with nothing. We want to remove them. That's what dot replace will do right here. Dot replace then takes two arguments. It's going to take, well, it tells you right here, perhaps, replace replaces text in a string using an object that supports replacement within a string. A string containing the text to replace for every successful match of search value. Okay, so in a technical way here it's telling you we're gonna try to find um, instances of the characters that we don't want, comma, replace it with something else. The something else is gonna be in quotes no space in those quotes because then what we're just doing is we're replacing an empty space with an empty space so no space between those quotes the what we're replacing here is going to be a very confusing looking um, regular expression slash this is a forward slash backslash capital W forward slash G. Regular expressions also known as a you know regex or sometimes people call them reg exp. So a regular expression which is a way to match characters in a string. It's kind of an esoteric way to do it. It's, it's based on slashes and uh, asterisks and, and single letters. It's kind of weird. It's like very, very, very nerdy. It's like what this, what these, one, two, three, four, five. But these five, this is this is 
This is three commands right here, even though it doesn't look like it at all with anything we've done before. This is a standard. Regular expressions are a, are a language standard that is kind of universal in most languages, programming languages, but it's just it's very esoteric. It's like, what, what does that even mean? This first slash is saying, we're about to search with a regular expression. We're going to search for examples of characters that are not regular characters. And then we're going to do that globally, meaning in the whole word. Because we may find one example, the, the first instance of an empty space, and then we stop. With the slash G, we search for it for the whole word, the amazing space Spider-Man. So this very esoteric thing is saying, uh, use regular expressions to find examples of not special character of special characters globally, comma, replacing it with nothing. I'm going to put in the notes here. There is a website. Probably regex regular expression regex.com. What am I looking for here? Uh, maybe this one. Yeah, this this will work. Um, for more info, see regxr.com. That's a free website that teaches you the power of regular expressions. So um, here, basically, out of those five characters, we're doing something very powerfully, which is to search inside of this string, search inside of this variable, using regular expressions, find things that are not words, globally, comma, replace with nothing. So now that should create an ID that omits the empty spaces. Go ahead and save it and run it. Try to save a comic with spaces. Try saving The Amazing Spider-Man number 99. Try to save a comic with spaces. And then check your application, check the database to see if it stored it without the extra spaces. That's the whole point of this. We want to save an ID without the spaces of the of the title of the comic. Tried that out right now. I saved a comic called The Space Amazing Spider Man with the dash. And because of that regular expression, it took the spaces plus the non alphanumeric characters out and left me with what I wanted no spaces, no special characters, the full name of the comic plus the year and the number. So getting back to my code again, it was this. We replaced instances of non-alphanumeric characters with nothing. That can get pretty complex with selecting, like saying, uh, any instances of certain characters keep or instances of other characters don't keep. I, that regular expression can be very complex. It's sort of like a find.
Okay, I think we were also dealing... Yeah, last time we were also dealing with... Um, what if a person tries to save the same comic more than once? So that might happen. Uh, I know I have a comics, a comic called AA. Um, number one. Hmm, actually, I've got some a question for the class here. I just noticed something on mine. Uh, so I'm seeing in my ID, I've got AA, 1999, 1, or I've got this one, Amazing Spider-Man, 1999, number 99. Um, I'm not seeing a field called number. Are you guys seeing number? You guys are seeing number? Okay, I think I made a little mistake on mine then. I am <coughs> seeing my number in the ID, but I'm not seeing a field here. So you do see a number field here, just to confirm. No? Yes? Yes? Some of you, yes? Some of you know? Okay. Let me just confirm something because obviously... So like up here, title, year, publisher, notes, and ID. But I'm not seeing the number. So let me just confirm in my code. Oh, yeah. This is why. I'm I'm seeing right here. I'm I'm saving the ID and the title and the year and the publisher and the notes, but I'm not saving the the number. I'm using number. I'm using the ID. I mean I'm using the title, I'm using the year, I'm using the number in the ID, but I'm not storing the number. I made a mistake there. Did you did you do that right? We have title number val in number comma I was missing that for some reason were you missing that or did you figure it out that you needed to include that as well okay good good <coughs> so if you don't have that like me I forgot to put in the number field I technically wasn't saving it as its own field but I was using it up in the ID so it was working but that I just realized my number was missing. So if you don't have the number, make sure you add the number field, like me. OK, so I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to save a comic. I'm going to save comic ZZ number 1 from 1999. Z Comics. So, okay, I, I've just saved a comic. I'm going to save the exact same one. ZZ number 1, 1999. But this time, let's say I didn't realize that I saved that stuff there. So if I try to save that, in this case, error, trying to put comic with a status of 409. So this is one of the other things where we left off at last time. Um, when trying to save the exact same comic, this, this is a cause to tell the user, you've already saved the comic. So that's uh, going to be pretty straightforward, because we've got our switch statement. When we have db put, Remember, we were doing this. Right now, we've just got some console output. But error 409, which I just demonstrated, is an example of trying to save a comic that has already been saved. The exact same comic name, year, and um, 
and number means we've already got that comic saved. Okay, so what we'll do here is we want to make a pop-up happen that is telling the user you already have that num that comic saved. We have um, we have three different ways to make pop-ups. We have jQuery mobile version of a pop-up. We have native version of a pop-up. We have basic JavaScript version. So any one of those three is a valid way to make a pop-up. We've, we've done uh, one and three already in, in this project, I believe. Uh, we haven't done the native version, and that's using Cordova. We have all of these three different ways to make a pop-up. Uh, we know that the jQuery mobile version requires that we make a div, and then we set up our code to make it appear. The native version also requires us, uh, we also need the plugin for pop-ups installed in our project, and then we write the code and so forth. And then the JavaScript, that one, that's the most basic one. So we're just going to do the basic one here instead, not too fancy, which is the plain old alert. I'll say you already have that comic saved, or whatever message you want to give. So then to test that, you can run it. Try to save a comic that already exists. You should get that basic pop-up with whatever message you wrote. So I'm going to try to save again comic ZZ number 1, 1999. Pop-up. You already have that comic saved. If I want to fully style it, that's where I can use the jQuery mobile version. If I want to animate it that it appears, it flips into the screen, that's why I might want to use jQuery mobile. If I want a pop-up that looks a little bit more like a native version from the device, that's when I would use the Cordova version. This is fine here for a quick solution. That's why I noted that there's three ways to do it. And then for full notes, the why I'll explain right here. Yes? All three of the required fields, which is the name of the comic, the year of the comic, and the number of the comic. If all of those three match, it's got to be the exact comic we've already saved. Use it to animate pop ups. Use it to create pop-ups that look like they are from the OS or the device. And then the basic one, just a quick and dirty way to get it done. All three are valid. Whichever one, we'll just do the quick one right now. There's no correct one. They all work. It's up to you to decide which you think is more correct and more trouble to set up. So we'll just do the quick alert. OK, 
Okay, I think we've covered all of the things that I want to for the moment about saving the comic. We have a way now to take the input fields that they provide so far and save them to the database. We'll, we'll get back to um, adding, a, taking a photo of the comic and scanning a barcode. We'll get back to that. I want to first uh, continue with setting up retrieve the data, edit the data, delete the data, and then we will do uh, adding more data into uh, each particular document. So any questions on, on the things we did so far before moving on to the new concepts? Okay, so we want to just start to display this on screen. We've got a we've got a screen dedicated to that, view comics. In the view comics screen, I want to display at the minimum a full list of the comics and then later a searchable list of the comics a filterable list. But for the moment we'll start off with a simple tabular display of data, data in a table, and then we'll get fancy with it a little later. But we've got a view comics screen that we need to set up a little bit in order for us to output to that screen. Let's go to the HTML file, index HTML, and let's go find your PG view comics screen. In my case, it's at about line 200. <clears throat> Specifically then at about line 217. In my case, in the main body of the page article, I've got an H2 that says View Comics and a paragraph with placeholder text. I'm going to delete that. If you have something like that, we want to put in the article here a div. We will say div placeholder that will update to display list of comics. So the div in PG view comics is going to be our placeholder to display comics go here. The comics will be displayed in this div. Obviously, that placeholder text will be dynamically removed with the real data. Well, in order for us to write data into this element in the HTML, we should uniquely identify it. Meaning what? An ID. So let's add an ID attribute. We'll call this div show comics table. This is a div, and its purpose is to show comics. And I'm putting there a table that it's going to be displayed in a table. So again, these unique identifiers can be named anything you want. And mine are pretty ver uh, verbose, pretty wordy, so that I can tell what they are at a glance. That's all we need for this screen. We need some kind of div, a generic container, with a unique ID. And then we can start to display our comics in that div. So save your HTML file, and then we'll get back to the JavaScript. Well, if that's an HTML node, if that's an HTML element, we need to create an object of it in JavaScript so that we can use it and manipulate it in JavaScript back to the index.js. Let's find our place where we've created all our variables. I'm going to create another variable. This is near the beginning of our code. So 
So somewhere up on line 40 or so, 30 or so, is where we've created all of these variables, all of these global variables that we use over and over to do various things. We've got our different forms there, we've got our different pop-ups, we've got our user email thing, all of that stuff. Then we've got our, our, our pouch variable. So here's another one. Object uh, to display our list of comics in or from index in index HTML. So we'll create a new variable here. As we've been doing, dollar $l, because it's some sort of element. The name of it was div show comics table. I'll just use the same name, capital D, as our naming convention has been. So now we've got a JavaScript object. Assign it the unique ID. Assign it the object in the HTML file based on the unique ID. Quotes pound. I know people are going to say their thing doesn't work. Don't forget the pound symbol. Because we're searching for an ID in the HTML file. We're using the jQuery selector to find something with a unique ID of div show comics table. Okay, so here then we've got a uh, variable representing that div in the HTML. We're going to then create a function to uh, retrieve the data from the database and display it on screen in that div. So let's go to the end of our code where our functions are at and we'll add a brand new function to retrieve the data, prepare it, and then display it on screen. So before our event listeners, right after the end of our save comic function, at approximately line 413, function to get the data from the database and prepare it to show on screen. So that means we're going to create a function called function show comics prep again about that we first have to prepare some data before fully uh, showing it or dealing with it similar to when we saved the data we just didn't take the data as is what they typed in we had to prepare the data we had to massage it and get it correct to put into the database this is going to be then now related to that in the opposite direction getting the data out of the database by itself is going to give you like raw raw data in JSON format. We want to prepare that data a little bit before displaying on screen. So pouch db can retrieve one document at a time or multiple entries multiple documents at a time. You may want to retrieve one comic for one reason, 
and then um, or uh, retrieve multiple in a in a in a sequence or a certain alphabetically and, and stuff like that. So we can use db.get one document based on its ID underscore ID so if I have a, a comic with an ID of ASM uh, 19631 this would go into the database it would get a document it would get an entry with this underscore ID you know pull it out of the database which would then have its title, its year, its notes, its photo, its barcode, whatever. It retrieves one document based on the ID. For the moment, I want to retrieve a list of all the comics saved, and then I can filter it and do other things with it. So this one we would have db.alldocs. It'd be cool if they had named it get all docs, but they didn't. It's just all docs. All documents retrieved. This one doesn't need to have an ID because it's going to get all the documents. But we could have options such as a range of documents and other options. But we're going to use all docs because we want to get everything out of the database at the moment and then do other stuff with it. So those notes there, after the notes, the actual command will be db.alldocs, parentheses, semicolon. What we will be doing is now get all comics documents from the database, including every field, order it A to Z, and then process results. All docs will technically only retrieve a list of all of the IDs of the things we've saved into the database. It will retrieve right the the unique ID, but not the title, not the notes, not the photo, etc. So we have to tell it, retrieve the comics, but also their notes and their years and all of that. And when we pull it out of the database, I want it alphabetized. That'll save me a step there. And then we can start to show it on screen. So in order uh, to have these extra options here, in JSON format, we are going to feed it some options. So curly braces right here. We're going to have some options in JSON format. We pass in an argument options in JSON format. So first of all, quotes there. We'll say include underscore docs colon true comma quotes ascending colon true this is the part where we say including every field so include the complete document true comma and alphabetize it ascending from A to Z true if we uh, don't put ascending true, it'll give it back to us in the order that it was saved. So I might have <clears throat> saved, you know, comic zero girl first, and then after that alpha flight. Will it be out of order alphabetically? 
uh, here, then whatever order the comics are stored in, it will return it to us in ascending order A to Z. Now, if for whatever reason we wanted to retrieve it in, in uh, from Z order, from Z to A, what do you think that is? Ascending versus descending. So if you wanted it from Z to A, that's descending order. You want it ascending. When I noted here, then process the results, remember I said that basically every pouch command, it, you know, dot put, dot get, dot all docs, whatever, might have some options. And then after that, uh, a callback function. Then we use a callback function to deal with success or failure of attempt. We are attempting, ultimately we're attempting to get all the documents. db.put, we're attempting to put the data. If we wanted to get one document, db.get, we're attempting to get one thing. The result of almost every patch command then is either success or failure. And if there's a success, show the comics on screen. If there's a failure, we'll put an error message and so forth, and we will deal with the error. Well, this is the part then. For readability, I'm going to break this. We're going to have a comma right here. A, uh, the, the failure and success callback goes right here after this comma. Don't forget that comma. But I'm going to break that into the next line, because it's going to be more readable that way. And I'm going to note that that's end dot all docs. So be careful here. This is this ending, this ending sad winking face right here is a uh, part of the all docs because we've given our first option, our first parameter, comma, callback function, which I'm moving to the next line just so that it's more readable. So function, anonymous function, parentheses, curly braces, this is where we then had, uh, we always have then failure, success. The two possibilities of every pouch command are failure or success in that order. And as I said before, these can be named uh, anything, because sometimes I see it as error and as OK. Those can be named as anything, but I think it makes more sense to name them a little bit more obviously. There is either a failure object returned to us or a success object returned to us from PouchDB. Well, in these curly braces, break that apart and failure or success. Question? Uh, I'm not sure, but probably not, because PouchDB uh, is in a style of, of the modern NoSQL style database, in that it's trying to not actively not use the classic types of databases, which often run on a server. So to my knowledge, SQL queries don't work, because it's part of a generation of databases avoiding SQL. Actually, here, uh, looking at my notes, this might actually be a cleaner way that, to do this. Um, we can actually put it like this. Save ourselves one line. We don't have to. Uh, we don't have to explicitly also have an extra line that says, "Here's the end of our curly brace." So we can back up to do that. This curly brace ends the callback function. This parenthesis ends all docs. We don't really need to put it on its own line. I cleaned it up there just for readability. Yeah. So db.get can be used for a search function? Yes. Um, well, in the, in the sense of it can retrieve exactly one document. As for a full search method, it is going to be slightly different, which we'll cover a little bit later. 
right now we're just saying get all the data db.get would get one item that we know what it is but if we wanted to search for a certain data in the database that's a slightly different way which we'll get to a little later okay so um, make sure you you did it like this curly brace ends function okay well we've got the possibility of failure or success that is our if else statement to deal with if it's a failure do something or else it's a success do something else and, and that we, we will note it here and if else um, working with failure or success uh, dot all docs Okay, so what we're usually checking if there's a failure we need to deal with the failure so error retrieving from database and we can then say what was that failure what error code did we get or what sort of feedback message did we get so that as we beta test this we can figure out what to do or maybe display something to the user but this operation here the user should not be concerned with this if we're coding this properly if we save data to the database there shouldn't be a way to accidentally try to retrieve a comic that doesn't exist but here for the console we'll have some output saying yeah we've retrieved I mean we've had a failure in retrieving or else we can have a successful result We have the data, success, so success is an object that is created automatically by Pouch when we try to get all of the data. If it worked, Pouch will bring, give us back all of the data encoded in this one object in JSON format. If we test it at this point, actually before we test it, um, there's no trigger that makes it appear. So um, how can we force that? Uh, let's see what happens. It might be too early to try to confirm if this works. Let's just see what happens here. Let's call the function, function prep. Let's see what happens. We'll take a break in a moment but let's just say okay call call the function I don't think this will fully work just yet because we're not there yet but I want to see if we see something and, and then we'll take a break but the idea is if we've saved data to the database then let's prepare the data to be visible it's not going to be visible on screen yet the closest will be that in your console it will show some raw data perhaps let me just confirm what that looks like before we proceed As soon as I F12 here, uh, okay, close, uh, it is saying that function show comics prep is running because nothing triggered it. It was just running on by itself. So we have some data, some, some data in an object. Uh, actually, to be a little bit more obvious, you can say success.rows. I'll explain that in a moment, but this is we have an object and we have a property of that object. This is something internal to PouchDB. I'll explain and put it in the notes in a moment. And let's see here if we run that.
Okay, getting there. We have the data. First comic, second comic, third comic, fourth comic, fifth comic. I've saved five comics so far. I've got five objects in the database. Counting from zero, the first comic There is a document here with a title. So all of my comic data is in this object. I'm looking at the zero with row, the zero with item saved. Um, this document title displayed in the console. A A. In the application viewer, it just so happened that I saved that the first comic that I saved was A A. And so it's saying here what we wrote the first comic starting from zero, show me the title. Now, uh, that does not correspond with this, the first comic, second comic, fourth, etc. Internally in the database, it's saved in this order sequentially. But I'm saying in here, in pouch, retrieve all of the documents, give them to me in alphabetical order. So it happened to be that zero is AA, and if I try to do number two, it will be BB. But here then, and actually I wrote all of these comics in alphabetical order without thinking, but this is alphabetical order, A, B, A, T, Z. But in my case, I have five comics. If I then say rows zero, I mean uh, rows four, right here, I have five comics. If you don't have five comics, this won't work, obviously. If you have three comics, yours is 0, 1, 2, right? Because you've got three comics. I have five comics, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the fifth comic is, in my case, number 4. Show me the title of the fifth comic. Which is ZZ because it so happens that when I save them in this order, A, B, A, T, or actually A, A, B, T, Z, the fifth comic is Z, Z. So let's check here. Comic 1, which is the second comic. So the second comic I'm retrieving, the Amazing Spider-Man. You see that? A, uh, and then A, and then the other A, and then B, and then Z. It's omitting the, t the the like I want it. I don't want to use the as alphabetization of my data. A, A is first. A, M is second. A, N, third. B, B, fourth. And Z, Z, fifth. So this is just to show that in attempting to get the documents, I had a success, so this else happens. It kicks back all of the data in that object, showing me specifically the second object, its type. 
that again is going back to the concepts of JSON, which right after the break, okay, we have this raw data. What do we do with it? How do we display it on screen? How do we make a table out of it? That's further part of the lecture about then turning raw JSON data into human readable pretty tables on the screen. So if it worked at this point, very good. If not, we're going to take our break uh, to make sure it works. It's 6.56. We'll take a break until 7.06, and then we'll go on.